Hey, Aiden. What are you going to do today? Uh, I'm going to model the homebrew system. That's right. We're going to modify a homebrew system. And what we got on the table right here are pretty much all the parts that are going to be needed to follow Keith D's instructions from Homebrew Talks. Oh! Yeah, so what do you want to see first? This big thing? Alright, right here, Sponsor Untold, is our homebrew delivery system. Yeah. And what we're going to do is bypass the standard single shot CO2 cartridge. What else do you want to know about? That stuff? All right, let's start. I'm going to tell you. What I got here is a CO2 tank. Now, my local Lowe's, all of my hardware actually is courtesy of Lowe's. Uh, they were they were pushing these things out for 20 bucks, brand new and full. So that was a pretty good deal because they retail 35. Now, this right here is our CO2 regulator. It's a standard pneumatic uh, regulator uh, with a quick connect release. It'll make it nice and easy to use it for when I have to do my weekend home projects. Typically retails for 79 bucks, but our local store was actually uh, trying to get rid of them, got it for 52 bucks, so not a bad deal there. Now these parts right here, this is the hardware that's going to be needed. Yeah. Um, all the same stuff. We're going to go through connectors to the ultimate quick connect. Uh, it should be noted, however, take a look at the back, uh, these do contain what they call greater than 0.25% lead. Yeah. You know what lead does to you? What? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's not good to consume. However, this will be on the air side only, so real concern is obviously if it ever gets uh, backed up with any liquids. Um, but some states, maybe California, says you probably shouldn't drink anything that touches this stuff. Oh. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Okay. What? While we're, while we're doing home with the home boost system. That's a good question, Aiden. What we're going to do here is actually take apart the valve system so we can just start working on the specific innards of it. Well, I'm going to do it right now. Okay, well, let's do it right now. So what I've done here is I've already emptied out the contents. Uh, this was already under pressure, so it came out pretty easily. Uh, but you can also just uh, counterclockwise rotate the neck of this, and it'll undo. Careful if it's already under pressure, though. You don't want to empty it out. Now what you'll notice is there's a valve stem that runs all the way to the bottom. So if it's sitting in this upright position, the liquid will still be in there. However, if you turn it this way, you can relieve the pressure um, as that valve stem will end up sitting somewhere up in the top there. And once you grab a hold of this camera, just hold it right here. I'm going to show everyone how easy this is. Ready? Up, 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 up. There you go. If you just simply rotate it and you just unturn it. Keep it there. There you go. All right. Hang on. Let me just take this apart. All right. So here we've got the valve handle as well as the tube and stem with a small counterweight. That helps keep it down in solution, as I talked about earlier. Uh, this is where we're going to be actually going is the problem. Uh, so I'm just going to use a, a pair of these grips um, on a setting that'll just get enough tension and and take that part, take this whole bottom portion off. Uh, there's two little fins on the inside, which is the clicking sound you'll hear as it's snapping into place. All right, so I've already started this um, with those grips, and you, you, you heard some clicking sounds, and as you can see right here, uh, those, pin, those fins uh, were used just to lock it in place, and they bend backwards, so uh, we can, and there's the teeth that it's actually locking up against. Uh, right on the inside there. So they can be removed. Um, threads will still work. Um, if you ever do decide to somehow seal this thing back up and, and use these type of cylinders, you'll also see some modifications that never adjust this part, uh, but simply attack, attack it from actually the CO2 cartridge by cutting out the bottom and just providing the feed that way. There's, there's definitely some options that uh, you can go with. All right, so in order to remove uh, the side piece uh, where we're going to get in, you're going to notice two small little fingers right to each side. We're going to have to compress those in, and this outer portion will just pop right off. So I'm just going to try to pop this side finger in right here. Just push it in until it rotates. It I'm using rotate. my pliers. But don't cut yourself. Not my pliers. Pliers are these nice grips. Actually slid right out. And what you'll notice is uh, there's a spring on the inside. I'm actually 
hey, launched I, it out for me. Hey, excuse me. Hey, can I hold the, the now boy we'll see the, can I Hey, go grab it. What we're left is with another white cap that actually seals off the uh, the CO2 from, from leaking back on this side. Uh, so that spring was holding that in place. It looks like it's a bar, there's a bar that runs vertical um, right through to where you'll, you'll notice the the pin placement down on the bottom here. Um, as Keith put it, he tugged and tugged trying to pull it out, which eventually broke off this outer ring, outer plastic uh, piece. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, that step of drilling it out. Um, suggest a 3 16 so This is just one size smaller. It's not so important. Just don't go too far because uh, you don't want to run it all the way through in the inside. Uh, so about an inch at most. Just keep on attacking until it ends up coming out. Uh, we're going to see how this works out. It uh, originally broke through the outer shell. I went just a little further, not quite an inch. Uh, felt it break through a second time, and now I ended up pulling out uh, this little clear plastic plug here. Uh, we're going to try to experiment see where that comes from. Uh, but if you get to look inside at that point, you can actually see straight through the entire white hat. Yeah. All right, so when all said and done, uh, I drilled through that center portion uh, inside here, the cavity. Uh, which contains two grommet o-rings, uh, one on the side and actually one at the bottom. Um, got a rubber grommet here, which actually uh, attached to the pin. Uh, as I drilled through, I actually made a path <laughs> right along the pin side, uh, which was going right inside the center of this cavity here. Um, and vertical was actually holding that whole piece in place. So when we first looked at the problem set, we were drilling in from here, um, perpendicular to which the uh, the pin actually sits. Um, but that drills that all apart and it removes that piece. 